Hi guys, bonjour, this is Shariq and welcome back to Globetrot with Arabic. This is going to be a Lebanese Arabic lesson to my Lebanese Arabic students. So you notice today I'm not out and about, I am concentrating here in my studio because this is a lesson that requires concentration. It's going to be a grammar lesson. We will talk about possessive endings and how to use possessive endings in Lebanese Arabic. So just like me, I have a pen and I have my writing pad. You to grab a pen, grab a piece of paper or a notebook or anything you want but make sure you write things down so that your brain can memorize things faster and also we will be having a small conversation so make sure to repeat sentences after me write down the sentences even you can memorize vocab you can also become more fluent and of course with time you can develop more of a native like pronunciation so let's begin and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm gonna be here with you on the corner of your screen so that you know that I'm here with you. Let's open the file that we need for our lesson today. Oh, and before we begin actually, make sure you go to my channel, you see this subscribe button, you click it, and most importantly, you click on this bell here because if you do, you can receive notifications from me every time I upload a lesson. Okay, so, this is the conversation between me and another guy called John but you will see that I will be answering myself the questions that I ask because there's no John next to me so he talks to me so I'm gonna pretend I am John as well I think in this conversation I am a bit the kind of girl who keeps asking questions and I'm being annoying and I'm asking about the car of a guy or something like that but I'm just using this for the sake of using as many words that have possessive endings before we begin, I want to also tell you that it's very important for you to see my previous lesson where I spoke about personal pronouns in Lebanese Arabic. If you haven't seen it, I will leave a link in the description box down below. Make sure to check it and when you check it and you feel confident in it, then you can do this lesson. So let's begin. Anna, اسمي شاريك. وانت شو اسمك؟ اسمي جون. حلوة سيارتك جون. وين بيتك؟ بيتي بشارع الكاسليك طيب وشو رقمك رقم تليفونك ما عندي تليفون let's repeat انا اسمي شاغيك وانت شو اسمك اسمي جون حلوه سيارتك جون وين بيتك بيتي بشارع الكاسليك طيب وشو رقمك or رقم تليفونك now, let's break it down as usual. Anna, Ismi, Shariq. Anna means I. Ism means name. The A in the end means my. Shariq is my name. So, Anna, Ismi, Shariq. It's like in English you are saying, I, my name, Shariq. Of course, I can remove this Anna and just say Isme Shariq because already this A in the end is showing that it's my. So I don't need this I with it. But if I put it, it's not wrong. So I can use both. I can use Anna Isme Shariq and I can also use Isme Shariq. Wu inta shu ismak. Wu inta shu ismak. So this wu means and. If you notice here in Arabic, it's not a separate letter, it's part of the word inta. Unlike in English, in English you have and you and they are separate. In Arabic, it's part of the word. Inta and you. Shu ismak. What? Name. Your. Inta. Shu ismak. And you. What's your name? So here you notice in Arabic we don't have a verb to be in the present. So it's like you're saying in English what your name instead of what's your name. So let's repeat. Anna isme Shariq u inta shu ismak isme John. You see here I didn't put the Anna. I could have but I don't need to. Isme John. My name is John. So name my John and there's no is here doesn't exist it's me John my name is John Hello, siyartak John when baitak 
حلوة beautiful in the feminine form and how do you know it's the feminine word because it has this a in the end in fact in Arabic it's written here with a te marbuta and this te marbuta means the adjective is feminine all the nouns and all the adjectives that have te marbuta are 100% feminine in this case I used this te marbuta which I wrote in English letters as halwe with the a sound in the end because the word siyara is a feminine word so if we have a feminine noun we will definitely need a feminine adjective too okay so hilwe siyartak john your car is beautiful john again there is no is if you notice i'm saying beautiful your car john so let's look at this word siyartak and break it down if i write this in arabic it's actually written like this, siyara, with this silent t, te marbuta, and like this in Arabic, siyara. You see, this is not even pronounced. I'm just saying siyara. I'm not saying siyarat. It's just siyara. But what happens is that the moment I attach a possessive ending to it, like here, ak, we have to pronounce this t. We can't say siyara ak, no, we have to say siyar tak. That's why I highlighted this T because alone this word siyara is silent, you see? It's silent. But the moment I attach this possessive ending to it, I'm gonna pronounce it. So we say siyara, but we say siyar tak. And even this a sound, the vowel before the T is kind of disappearing. So instead of saying siyaratak, which we say in modern standard Arabic, in Lebanese Arabic we're kind of dropping the sound and we're saying siyaratak rather than siyaratak. So when I say hilwe siyaratak, John, I'm saying your car is beautiful, John. Wen baytak, when, where, baytak. So, bait means house. Baitak, as you can guess by now, is your house in the masculine form. Let's repeat the whole thing so far. Ana, ismi, shari, wenta, shu ismak, and you, what's your name? Ismi, John. Hilwe siyartak, John. Wen baitak, where is your house or where is your home? Bayti bishir al kaslif. Actually, I could have put these a sounds here. Whenever you see me putting this tiny tilted line on the e, it's the a sound that is very unique to Lebanese Arabic. And I think the reason why we write it while using English letters is because we have this French influence where we take this e accent aigu. We call it in French e accent aigu and we use it in Lebanese Arabic. But let's say I'm chatting to friends and family and I'm speaking Arabic to them by using Latin letters. I don't need to put this. They will still understand that I'm saying Bayti. Anyways, going back to this sentence, John is answering here. Bayti bishir el kaslik. Bayti, bait, house. Bayti, my house. Bishir, bi means in. Share means streets. Bayti bishere el kaslik. Kaslik is the name of a street in Lebanon. It's a street that is located more towards the north and it has lots of shopping centers and also restaurants. It used to be like when you say kaslik, it's like you're from a posh area or something. So, Bayti bishere el kaslik. My house is in the street of Kaslik. So, Beit house, Beite, my house. And I don't know why I have a question mark here, it's pointless. Tayyib, وشو رأمك? We can also say رأم تليفونك. Tayyib, okay, or alright. وشو رأمك? And what's your number? So, and I'm saying here, وشو رأمك? I could have said شو رأمك? Instead of and what's your number, it's just What's your number? Tayyib, shu ra'mak? Ra'mak. Ra'm in Arabic means number. Ra'mak means your number. You notice here in Arabic I wrote it, raqmak. 
So the Qaf is written in standard Arabic. But in Lebanese Arabic, we never pronounce it as a Qaf. We always pronounce it as a uh, uh sound. But when I come here to write it in Latin letters, I'm using a number two. Because this sound does not exist in English, so there is no letter that is an equivalent to the uh sound. That's why we use a number two just to represent it. So this is not a formal way of writing things. It's just a way that we use to talk to family members, friends when we're chatting on the phone or WhatsApp or anything like that. So, طيب وشو رأمك? All right. And what's your number? We can also say رأم تلفونك. رأم means number as I said telefon means phone and the reason why I put two O's here although it's written with one O is for you to make it a bit longer when you're pronouncing it in Lebanese Arabic okay so this is a phonetic representation rather than a real spelling so telefon means phone and ak means your so telefonak What's your phone number? And now he's gonna dump me and he's gonna say Ma عندي telephone Ma عندي telephone عندي means I have Ma عندي means I don't have And telephone means phone Ma عندي telephone I don't have a phone So here, if you look at the word عندي You will notice that in Arabic We don't have a verb for to have. In English, it's a verb. I have, you have, he has. In Arabic, it's not actually a verb. It is عند, which means at, plus a, which means mine. So it's like you are saying at mine, at yours, at his, when you conjugate it. So عند means I have. So to repeat the whole conversation, أنا اسمي شغيق. وانت شو اسمك؟ اسمي جون حلوة سيارتك جون وين بيتك؟ بيتي بشارع الكاسليك طيب وشو رقمك؟ or طيب وشو رقم تليفونك؟ ما عندي تليفون I don't have a phone Okay Let's come to this page where I already wrote the words اسم 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 and سيارة 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 so that I can tell you what are the possessive endings for these in Lebanese Arabic so from this conversation we already know that when we add the a sound it means my, right? so when I say here اسمي it means my name if I write it in Arabic I will add the e here in the end so when I join them it's gonna be is me like this but in Lebanese Arabic this E sound is pronounced as a E it's just a pronunciation thing unique to Lebanese people so of course you can say is me but it's not so Lebanese to say is me we will pronounce it is me so is me and we already know the ak for your name is mak your name masculine is me Ismak. Now I'm gonna tell you the rest. You can't guess them from the text because I didn't say them in the conversation. So, Ismi, Ismak, Ismik. Your name, feminine. Ismo is his name. Isma is her name. Ismna, our names. Ism kun, your name plural, and ismun, their name. Let's repeat these by writing them in Arabic. Let me delete the first one here. So we said ismi. When it comes to ismak, what happens is I'm adding a fatha here. Isma plus Ismak, okay? Ismik, your name feminine. So Ismak is your name masculine. Ismik, your name feminine. Ismo, now this is a bit tricky. We will put a Dhamma here. We will put an H, Ismo, 
but we no, we never pronounce this h sound in Lebanese Arabic. In Standard Arabic, it's ismuhu. In Lebanese Arabic, we will only pronounce it ismo with the o sound rather than u. Ismo. So we can write it ismo like that. And I can even write just a phonetic representation and say it like this ismo. Excuse my bad handwriting. So, isme, as we said, my name. Ismak, your name. Ismik, your name feminine. Ismo, his name. Isma, with the a in the end, which we will write as an h and an alif. Isma, we don't need to say ismha, although there are some countries that say it. But in Lebanese Arabic, we will only say isma. So we will write it ismha, but we will pronounce it isma. And a lot of times, because there is no standard way of writing a spoken dialect, you will find people who write isma, for example. So isme, ismak, ismik, ismo, isma. Now ismna. Our name, ism kun, your name, plural, ismun, their name. Again, there's an H here we don't pronounce, ismun, but we will pronounce it ismun because there is a dhamma here, ismun. I think for now, if you don't know how to write Arabic, you can stick to this part. Even if you know how to write Arabic, this part will help you more in the way you can pronounce them. And because here I write them exactly the way we pronounce them, whereas in Arabic, you notice, they can be written a bit differently from the way they are pronounced. So let's repeat all of them. Isme, my name. Ismak, your name masculine. Ismik, your name feminine. Ismo, his name. Isma, her name. Ismna, our name, plural, ismkun, your name in the plural, and ismun, their name. Something I didn't say, maybe you noticed already, ism is the word alone name, but when I'm saying isme, I'm not really pronouncing this, it's like a little bit silent, so isme, ismak, ismik, ismo, isma, ismna, ismkun, Ismun. So whenever there's a vowel just before this, the last consonant and you're adding this possessive ending, you can drop the vowel sound. Okay? Now, let's try with the word siyara. Remember when I mentioned to you that the word siyara, when it stands alone, it has a te marbuta, which is a T sound, but most of the times it's silent. But when I attach a possessive ending to it, of course, this temor buta is not going to stay silent. So, let's add the possessive endings that we already spoke about. So, the e, the ak, ik, o, a, na, kun, on. If you memorize these, that's it. You can use them really anywhere. Okay, so alone the word is siyara, but now we added the e, so we're not gonna say siyara e, we will say siyara te, but again this vowel sound is kind of dropping. So siyar te, siyar tak, siyar tik, your car feminine, siyar to, his car. Siyarta. But we can also, in this case, we can say siyarita, her car, siyarita. You don't need to drop this. Siyaritna, siyaritna, siyaritkun, siyaritun. So these A's are staying, but they are kind of becoming like a bit a uh sound. Siyaritna, siyaritkun. Okay? So it's like there is a stress. Siyaritna, siyaritskun, and siyariton. Now, how will we write this in Arabic? So, siyarte. What's happening to this te marbuta? 
it's not here anymore. What we do is we take this Tamar Buta, we open it. Why is this called a Tamar Buta, by the way? A Tamar Buta is a T. Marbuta means tied around itself. Maybe because a T is usually like that in Arabic, the T, the sound T, the letter T. And in this case, it's tying itself around itself. Maybe that's why they call it the te marbuta. So what happens is that whenever we attach a possessive ending, this te marbuta is going back to opening itself. It was marbuta and now it's no more going to be marbuta. It's going to be like this. It opened itself. It became like a normal T. That's why we write it like this. CRT. Okay. CRT. And then we have CR tak like this in the end, CR tik, CR to again, as I said, you can put a dhamma here, and then add the H, CR to, but you don't need to uh, pronounce it, we will just say CR to, and you will also find people who write it phonetically like this, CR to like that cr to and then cr ha which we will pronounce cr ta cr na our car cr kun your car in the plural and cr hon which we will pronounce cr tun okay let me repeat one more time. Siyarte, my car. Siyartak, your car. Siyartik, your car feminine. Siyarto, his car. Siyarita, her car. Siyaritna, our car. Siyaritkun, your car in the plural. And Siyaritun, their car. That's it for today. But before you go, you have to do homework for next time. You have to find the words bait, ra'am and telephone which are in the text and you have to add all the possessive endings to them and you have to write these in the comment box on my video so that maybe I can check them and maybe I can correct them and if you have questions you can of course ask me and more important than this you have to guess how do you conjugate I have, you have, he has in Arabic. You have the word already and, which means at, and you have to add at mine, at yours, at his, at hers. And in Arabic, when you say at mine, it means I have at yours, which means you have at his, it means he has. That's how it works in Arabic. Let's see who's going to guess it. And if you guessed it, you can write it also in the comment box below. I think that's it for now. Okay guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and most importantly, I hope you learned something and I hope everything was clear. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment box below. I will make sure to answer them. And excuse my bad handwriting with this pen because i still need to get used to it it's a bit like it goes wiggly when you're writing but it's only gonna get better with time thank you very much shukran ktir merci ktir and shufkun bukra i'll see you tomorrow bye yalla bye